Brace yourselves, because we're about to dive headfirst into one of the most perplexing and controversial mysteries found within the pages of the Bible, the Nephilim, giants who walked the earth in ancient times. This topic has puzzled scholars and sparked endless debates for centuries. Pay close attention, because what you're about to learn could shatter your understanding of biblical history as you know it. We first encounter these enigmatic beings in Genesis chapter 6 verse 4, which reads, The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. Who were these Nephilim? Were they literal giants roaming the land, or is there a deeper symbolic meaning behind their existence? This question has divided theologians into multiple camps, each with their own compelling interpretations. Prepare to have your mind blown, folks. Some scholars interpret the Nephilim as actual giants, the offspring of fallen angels who engaged in unholy relations with human women. Yes, you heard that correctly. Angels mating with humans, producing hybrid offspring. It's a mind-bending concept that seems straight out of ancient mythology, but it's a theory that has gained significant traction throughout history. In Numbers chapter 13 verse 33, we read the terrifying account of the Israelite spies who encountered the Nephilim in Canaan. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. The description of these beings as towering giants, making the Israelites feel like mere insects in comparison, is chilling to say the least. Pay attention to these lessons of life, as your understanding of God's instruction to us through the Bible, and consequently your salvation may depend on it. And you know what else? There are numerous accounts throughout history of giant skeletal remains being discovered, which some claim to be physical evidence of the Nephilim's existence. These findings have only fueled the debate surrounding their literal interpretation. But here's the thing. Not all theologians subscribe to this literal view of the Nephilim as physical giants. Some see them as symbolic representations of the corrupted state of humanity before the Great Flood. Powerful and influential figures who had achieved great renown, but whose moral compasses were completely askew. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 37, Jesus himself alludes to the days of Noah, issuing a stark warning. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Could this be a reference to the spiritual decadence that plagued humanity before the flood, a time when the Nephilim, whether literal or symbolic, held sway over the hearts and minds of the people? Are you listening to this? Because there's another fascinating theory that attempts to blend the literal and symbolic interpretations of the Nephilim some scholars suggest that these beings weren't giants themselves, but rather the offspring of unholy unions between the godly line of Seth and the ungodly line of Cain. You see, in Genesis chapter 4 verse 26, we're introduced to the descendants of Seth, who began to call on the name of the Lord. But then, just a few verses later in Genesis 6-2, we're told that the sons of God were attracted to the daughters of humans. Don't just hear this, understand this. The sons of God could refer to the godly Sethites, while the daughters of humans were the ungodly descendants of Cain. Their intermingling produced a rebellious and corrupt generation. The Nephilim, whether literal giants or symbolic representations of sin and disobedience. Most of you will not be ready or absorb all the lessons here today, so you should re-watch this content, along with other videos on the channel to deepen your understanding. But the mystery doesn't end there. Let's delve deeper into the biblical accounts of these alleged giants because the evidence is far from scarce. In Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 11, we're given a glimpse into the sheer size of Og, king of Bashan. Only Og, king of Bashan, was left of the remnant of the Rephates. His bed was made of iron and was more than 13 feet long and 6 feet wide. A bed of such massive proportions could only belong to a true giant, don't you think? And in Joshua chapter 11 verses 21 to 22, we're told that Joshua totally destroyed the Anakites from the hill country, from Hebron, Debir, and Anab, from all the hill country of Judah, and from all the hill country of Israel. 
These Anakites were descendants of the Nephilim, according to Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. Their eradication was a fulfillment of God's command to drive out the inhabitants of Canaan, many of whom were said to be giants. But wait, there's more. In the famous story of David and Goliath found in 1 Samuel chapter 17, we're introduced to the infamous Philistine giant who stood over nine feet tall. His encounter with the young David remains one of the most iconic tales in the Bible, a testament to the power of faith and unwavering trust in God, even when faced with overwhelming odds. Pay attention to these lessons of life as your understanding of God's instruction to us through the Bible and consequently your salvation may depend on it. And you know what else? The Bible makes mention of other giant races, such as the Zamzamites and the Amites, described as a people great and many and tall as the Anakites, Deuteronomy chapter 2 verses 10 to 11. These accounts seem to further reinforce the idea of giants inhabiting the ancient world. Most of you may struggle to fully absorb and comprehend the depth of these lessons today, so be sure to revisit this content and explore the wealth of resources available on this channel. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, or should I say, the giant in the room. Why would God, in his infinite wisdom, allow such beings to exist in the first place? Well, according to some theologians, the presence of giants served as a test of faith for the Israelites. By conquering these seemingly invincible foes, they would learn to place their trust in God's power rather than their own strength and abilities. But here's the thing. Not all scholars agree with this interpretation. Some view the Nephilim not as a test, but as a warning, a vivid illustration of the consequences of disobedience and sin. Listen closely to this passage from Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 to 6. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. This passage suggests that the Nephilim, whether literal or symbolic, were a symptom of humanity's moral decay, a corruption so deep and pervasive that it ultimately led to the Great Flood as a means of purification and renewal. But don't just hear this, understand this. The Nephilim could also represent the spiritual battle that rages between good and evil, between the forces of God and the forces of darkness that seek to lead us astray. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, Paul issues a sobering reminder. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Could the Nephilim be symbolic representations of these spiritual forces, manifestations of the evil that seeks to corrupt and destroy us? The implications are profound, and they extend far beyond the ancient world. Pay attention to these lessons of life as your understanding of God's instruction to us through the Bible and consequently your salvation may depend on it. Most of you may find yourself struggling to fully grasp the gravity of these lessons today. That's why I implore you to revisit this content time and again and to explore the wealth of resources available on this channel. The path to true understanding is a journey, not a destination. Now let's turn our attention to the legacy of the Nephilim and their impact on our understanding of the Bible and the end times. In Matthew chapter 24 verses 37 to 39, Jesus issues a chilling warning, drawing a parallel between the days of Noah and the days leading up to his return. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Are you listening to this? This passage suggests that the world will once again descend into a state of moral and spiritual corruption akin to the era of the Nephilim, a time when sin and disobedience reigned supreme. The parallels are striking and impossible to ignore. And you know what else? The book of Revelation paints a vivid and terrifying picture of the ultimate spiritual battle between good and evil, with references to beasts and dragons that some scholars believe could be symbolic representations of the Nephilim or the forces they represent. But here's the thing. 
While the Nephilim may seem like a distant, mythical concept from a bygone era, their legacy and the lessons they impart hold profound significance for our lives today. They serve as a stark reminder of the consequences of disobedience and the importance of staying faithful to God's commands, no matter how tempting the allure of sin may be. In the parable of the sower found in Mark chapter 4 verses 5 to 9, Jesus warns against allowing the world's distractions and temptations to choke out the word of God in our lives, just as the Nephilim were a product of humanity's corruption and falling away from righteousness. Most of you may find yourselves struggling to fully grasp the depth of these lessons today, and that's perfectly okay. I encourage you to revisit this content time and again, and to explore the many other resources available on this channel. The pursuit of spiritual wisdom is a lifelong journey, and we must be diligent in our efforts to deepen our understanding. So what's your perspective on the mystery of the Nephilim? Were they literal giants who walked the earth? symbolic representations of sin and disobedience, or perhaps a combination of both. Share your thoughts and insights in the comments below. Let's engage in a respectful dialogue and learn from one another. But don't just hear this, understand this. The true lesson of the Nephilim transcends their physical stature or supernatural origins. It's a clarion call to vigilance, a reminder to guard our hearts and minds against the corrupting influences of the world that seek to lead us astray. Listen closely now. It's time to wake up and recognize the importance, the necessity of educating yourself on the Word of God and developing a deeper, more intimate relationship with the Lord. Check out the many other videos on this channel for more invaluable lessons and subscribe to ensure you always have access to a steady stream of spiritual inspiration and education. The mystery of the Nephilim may never be fully solved, but one thing is certain. Their legacy serves as a powerful reminder of the spiritual battle we face every day. A battle that rages not just in the physical realm, but in the depths of our souls. Will you heed the lessons of the past, or will you succumb to the same temptations and corruptions that led to the downfall of ancient civilizations? The choice is yours, my friends. Choose wisely, arm yourselves with the knowledge found in God's word, and may his grace guide you on your journey of faith.